Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome to a video I've been looking forward to making ever since I realized I was gonna have these three watches in my possession at the same time. A budget dive watch deathmatch. But this is budget Just One More Watch style. So we're not looking at $500, $200 or even $100. I don't think you should be paying more than about $75 for any of these watches. And we've got something for everyone. We've got the Casio MDV-106, AKA the Duro, a classic quartz piece from Japan. We've got the Vostok Amphibia, legendary Soviet era dive watch with in-house movement and a terrible bracelet. And we've got the Invicta Pro Diver. Bit of a love-hate relationship with this one, but you can't argue with a Seiko movement and an incredible value package. So what are we doing here today? Well, I think each of these three watches are fantastic value for money. Indeed, you'll find all three of them on my Amazon page where I've assembled my top 25 value watches under $500 with little mini reviews attached. So I'm gonna have a quick look at each one, dimensions and specifications, uh, wrist shot, loom shot, try and help you decide which one suits your purposes, make you a more informed consumer overall. All right, enough nonsense, let's get into it. So same, same, but very different then. 200 meters water resistance, screw down crowns, and a bit of loom, really the only thing these three watches have in common. The big Casio on the end there, obviously it's a quartz, a Japanese company, Japanese movement, but assembled in China on a rubber strap. The Vostok Amphibia in the middle, all the way from Kristopol in Russia with an in-house automatic movement. That one made of chromed brass. On the end, the all stainless steel Invicta, featuring a Japanese Seiko NH35 movement, but getting nil point from the Australian judge for originality. So really, a fair spread of watches, all within a pretty tight uh, price band. I think you should be paying for about 45 for the Casio. It's in my Amazon page as that. Now the Vostok, now you can pick these up on Amazon but they're about $85. If you're prepared to wait, there are no shortage of vendors on eBay. A bit of haggling, you should be able to get that one for about 65 bucks. The Invicta on the end, prices for these seem to fluctuate but there are a few on Amazon at the moment, $56. I really don't think you should be paying more than 75 each for these two, hence the price range on the thumbnail today. Okay, I'm gonna start with the Casio, then Vostok, then Amphibia, mini reviews of each, then bring them back in again at the end for a bit of pros and cons, let you know which one is my favorite, though you've probably already guessed that. The Casio then, the cheapest of our trio, but also the biggest, 44 millimeters in diameter, 12 and a half mil thick, 48 mil lug to lug and 22 mil on the lug width. This one weighing in at 93 grams on the supplied acrylic plastic strap. I guess you couldn't quite call it rubber. It's not soft enough to qualify, but a really nicely manufactured watch. We've got 120 click unidirectional rotating bezel, which is rock solid. We've got an all stainless steel body. We've got a stainless steel screw down case back as well as the screw down crown. Nice bit of laser etching on the back as well with a, a marlin there. Now this one is mineral crystal, so do beware. None of these watches are sapphire glass. This one's got a couple of nicks on it, it's second hand. We've got a date window at the three o'clock there. And as you can see, the second marker actually meets up with the indices, which is quite a feat in a cheap budget quartz piece. And I think it's a pretty attractive big thing. Thankfully, they've kept it nice and clean, just black, white, and silver with a little bit of red on the tip of the second hand there. Everything super legible, nice little bit of texture to those hands. They're not just flat, there's a, there's a bevel in the middle, as you can see. I'll pop up a loom shot. The loom is not stunning, to be honest. Uh, probably the weakest loom of the three watches that we're gonna be looking at today but you know, it's acceptable for the price. Now accuracy, quartz movement, you're gonna be looking at plus or minus maybe 20 seconds a month on these one. Ideal if you just wanna chuck it in a drawer, bring it out on a Saturday morning and chuck it back in a drawer on a Sunday night. And that's what it looks like on my seven inch wrist. 44, probably about the maximum size for me. It does wear quite big though. As mentioned in the individual review I did on this one, I don't think the strap helps. Those kind of overhangs on the lugs do make the watch look larger than it is, and it is already a large watch. But you know, the strap is actually quite decent, pretty comfortable, and should be very durable if you're in and out of the water with this one, which I guess is the point of one of these budget dive pieces. 
Up next then is the Amphibia and there are a bewildering array of different case shapes, sizes and dial patterns and colours to choose from. A good place to start therefore is Meronom.com which is the official website of the factory in Christopol. Whether you buy there or not, it's a good point of reference. This one is the 710634, 710 denoting the case shape, this is the so-called ministry case. Uh, with the exposed lugs and the 634 means it's the scuba dude dial in black. This one is actually made not of stainless steel as you might think but of chromed brass. We've got a 41 millimeter in diameter coming in at 15 and a half mil thick so it is a chunky little thing on the wrist. Lovely domed acrylic crystal there. 22 mil lug width again uh, this one 44 and a half mil lug to lug though so very short lug length meaning this slightly larger case size should suit much smaller wrist sizes weighing in at 115 grams on the supplied rather dodgy shiny bracelet in all honesty i sized this bracelet for the review today it's been in the box unused because they're not all that fantastic the clasp is about as nasty as it gets You've got the B for Bostock there. Uh, it does clip in, but it's not all that secure and it nips all the hairs out your arms. So well worth spending a couple of dollars getting rid of the original clasp. Zoomed in on the scuba dude dial then. This one has a bi-directional bezel with no clicks whatsoever. You can take the bezel off and adjust it. Eminently modifiable, these watches. Indeed, I had this one modded. I returned it to original specs for the vid today. We've got a date window at three, bit of loom on the hands, I'll pop up a loom shot. I think it's the best of the three watches today. Not a lot there, but it is reasonably uh, powerful and lasts for a good few hours. But again, you can expect miracles at this price point. Now, Vostok in-house movement running at just under five and a half ticks per second, this one. Uh, pretty decent. You can take the back off of these without fear though because the way they do the case back means uh, you can unscrew it. It's two pieces. You're not affecting the rubber seal every time, which is important. These are easily self-regulated. You should get them to running within, you know, plus or minus 10 seconds a day with a little bit of effort. And there it is then on my seven inch wrist. I like this case shape. It wears very, very comfortably. Oh, bracelet's pretty nasty though. I'd be getting rid of that but looks good. Plenty of wrist presence because of that lovely domed acrylic crystal. Does scratch easily, but a bit of poly watch should be able to, to get that one shining again as new. And last but not least then today, the Invicta Pro Diver. Classic Submariner proportions this one, 40 mil diameter, 20 mil lug width, just under 48 mil lug to lug, so wears pretty decently, kind of in between the other two, and just about 13 mil thickness, so still sits nicely on the vast majority of wrists. All stainless steel case this one, and stainless steel bracelet, so it's the only watch today that offers a, a full stainless steel case and bracelet. Now these are available in blue as shown here, you can get them in the classic subby black. You can also get them in a kind of two-tone gold black and gold and blue. Regardless of which one you choose, I wouldn't be going for this bezel. I'd be going for the OB derivation. That's just a standard coin edge bezel. Uh, these ones, I think they're kind of mixing their metaphors here. We've got a little bit of Omega and a little bit of Rolex. Regardless of which though, the bezel action is actually pretty decent. I'll pop up a loom shot, not stunning to be honest. I think the hands are just about all right, but there's notional loom on those indices, unfortunately. Close up on the dial and some nice little touches actually. Little Invicta logo on the counterbalance, also Invicta logo there underneath the 12 o'clock, but the sunburst isn't all that flashy and the handset is pretty flat to be honest, not a lot of texture going on there. Cyclops, mm, I'm not sure that one is applied as it should be either, but hey, you get what you pay for and you're not paying an awful lot with the Invicta, especially considering this, the star of the show as far as the Invicta is concerned, the Seiko NH35A, proper 24 dual movement, hacking, hand winding, 21,600 vibrations per hour, signed rotor there, Seiko reliability at the heart of the watch, probably won't have to service this one for a decade, even if you're wearing it regularly. See-through case back is a nice touch as well, especially considering it's a decent looking entry level movement. And that's it on wrist. Pretty good classic subby proportions. 
There's a reason that a lot of companies ape this design. It's because it wears so well. Not a fan of the polished mid links, but the, the brushing actually is fairly decent throughout. Couple of rough edges, but really not too bad. Definitely the value package. Nice little engraved clasp. It's a decent clasp, engages properly as well. Definitely the, the value package of the three on paper, this Invicta Pro Diver. Pros and cons then. Well, let's start with the Casio. Pros, well, I guess Quartz is one of the pros. It's gonna be super accurate and you can wear it once a month. It'll always be set for the right time. I think it's arguably the most attractive watch here today. Very clean, very legible, should be reliable as well because it's a Casio. The downsides, well, it's quartz. That knocks it out of the equation for some guys straight off the bat. And if you're gonna be getting it wet, you're gonna to have to take the back off every couple of years to replace the battery. They don't get more waterproof the more often you do that, that's for sure. But all in all, a fantastic watch. Not a big fan of the acrylic strap, but a couple of dollars should see that change for something better. Vostok in the middle. I love these watches, I've got two of them. I think definitely the most original watch of the three today. Uh, if you're looking for something with a story, heritage, history attached, it's really got to be the Vostok. A myriad choices as well. You can find the one that suits your personal style, as long as your style is a little bit shiny and a little bit Russian. Cons brings it onto the bracelet. Ooh, pretty nasty. And the bezel is next to useless. Let's be honest, it's there more for show than for anything else. The Invicta on the end, well definitely the value package, Seiko NH35 movement, all stainless steel, and it doesn't look as cheap as it is, that's for sure, but no originality, it's a subby homage, and it's an Invicta at that, that's going to put a lot of people off. Some rightly, some wrongly, I think if you don't have a huge budget and you want one watch, the Invicta is the one to go for. If it's something you're not gonna play around with, you're just gonna have as your, your daily driver or your weekend watch that you don't care about. Three great watches today, really something for everybody. Once again, proving that you don't have to spend a fortune to get a cracking timepiece on your wrist. So there you have it, proving that you don't have to break the bank to get a really robust waterproof timepiece on your wrist. Which one would I pick? Well, it's pretty obvious, the Vostok Amphibia for me all day, every day. I like the Duro, but it's a little bit too big for my wrists and my tastes. And the Invicta, as much as it offers a compelling value package, I prefer my homages a little more expensive than that one. So it's the Amphibia for me. Crack and piece, you can buy them in a multitude of case shapes and dial patterns, modify them to your heart's content, make it your amphibia. Thanks for watching, I really enjoyed making this one, I'll see you in the next video.